Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are... Well, I was going to say live. We're in the same physical place. This is... Look at this. This is not... <laughs> this is not editing. We are here coming to you uh, from my living room. That's right. As we have... No Often done, but not for, but not for a while. while. So yeah, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of cool, kind of fun. Thank you for being here. Thanks for making the drive. And on today's episode, we are going to present our argument for why it's time to let Bruce Lee go. Some people just hit stop right now. Some people did just hit stop, but I've got a feeling some others said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna hate watch this or hate yeah. listen to this," and that's okay. Yep, because. As we have always said, our goal here is not to tell you what to think, it's to get you to think. Mm -hmm. And if after this episode you think, you know what, Jeremy, Andrew, you are completely wrong and I hate you both, that's fine. As long as you've considered what we're giving to you. But before that, just a couple things to keep in mind. What do we do here at Whistlekick? Well, we are here to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. No matter where you are, no matter what you train, how, when, why, with whom you train, we have published our Six Freedoms of Martial Arts that the entire team is very much behind. And if you haven't checked that out, you might go to whistlekick.com and check out those freedoms. While you're there, you could also find something in the store, like maybe a shirt or uh, some pants or some sparring gear or whatever else is over there. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you save 15%. WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com is the place to go for everything related to this show. It's where we bring together transcripts and all that good stuff. And while you're over there, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can check out every single episode we've ever done. And, and why do we do it? Well, because we believe that martial arts makes people better. We believe that if we could get everyone in the world to train for just six months, the world would be a dramatically better place. And that is our mission. And if you're aligned with our mission, please consider helping us out in any way that makes sense. And the way that I would ask you most to consider is our Patreon, because yes, there are financial elements to what we do. And if you contribute as little as two bucks, you can help us out at patreon.com slash whistlekick. And we've got tiers that go up from there with tremendous value. And how do we know there's tremendous value? Because people don't stop their contributions. It is an absolutely insane retention number as we go through. So, yeah. Anything else? No, I think that's good. All right. It has been over 50 years since Bruce Lee passed, right? 1971? I think it's 50 years this year. 50 years, okay, 73? Yeah, I think 50 years last month, actually. Okay, okay. I, I did, that's right, I did see a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And it is difficult to overstate Bruce Lee's role in the martial arts community globally. Mm -hmm. I would argue that he is one of the most recognizable figures anywhere. Yep. I don't think there are very many people who if you show them a picture of Bruce Lee, would not know that it's Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. okay. He is he is iconic. Absolutely. His contributions to cinema, mm -hmm. <clears throat> his contributions to the martial arts, his, one of the things we've heard on past episode of Martial Arts Radio, his contributions to the world for essentially non-white individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huge. Yep. Huge. And, and not something that he had planned on, but his contributions to pop culture. Yes. Huge. In fact, if I go back to the early days of Whistlekick and, and working for venture funding, which never panned out, but if somebody's out there with a lot of money and you want to help, let me know. One of the things that I said in my, my pitch mm -hmm. was as a, as a, kid growing up in the martial arts, the only thing I had to represent what my passion to the world was a Bruce Lee t-shirt. Mm. It's Bruce Lee. Yeah. He's larger than life. And I want to make sure everyone under understands that as we walk down this path that we've just kind of completely set up and everyone's out there probably saying, yeah, I, I, I agree with where you are so far. Where's, where's the fire and brimstone that you're going to throw at some of us and make us very unhappy. 
I want to make sure we set this up right because we're on the same page. Bruce yeah. Lee has made massive contributions. Absolutely. Right now, I can see two books on the bookshelf. Bruce Lee books. You gave me one of them. I did give you one. But here's the general idea. As long as Bruce Lee occupies this... Uh, pedestal. Basically. Pedestal. And such a large one, and in such a large way, it makes it impossible for other people to come up. If you watch a lot of, you know, medieval such movies, right? You know, Game of Thrones-esque. Mm -hmm. There's often a discussion about, hey, king so-and-so, you're old. It's time to let the crown go mm -hmm. so somebody else can come up with some new ideas. And that, to me, is kind of the premise yeah. that we're working from here. If the king of our realm of martial arts has been gone for 50 years, nothing can change. Yeah, We can't grow. You can't have growth without change. So if we are locked into whatever Bruce Lee was and thus is... There's very little we can do. Yeah. And we run the risk of the longer we have him on a pedestal, the harder it will be for him to be taken off that pedestal. And yeah. we did an episode uh, a couple hundred episodes ago about not putting your instructors on a pedestal and how bad that can be. And I feel like uh, we as a society, as martial artists, as a group, as a community, have placed him on a pedestal and for many people think he can do no wrong. And so it makes it harder, as you said, for anyone else to, to contribute as much as he did. Yeah. Now, one of the things those of you out there may not realize, because we don't talk about stuff, kind of back end nitty gritty stuff in this way, is that if we do an episode that mentions Bruce Lee, if we do an episode where Bruce Lee is mentioned in the description, mm -hmm. if we record an episode with a guest who talks about Bruce Lee for a while, that episode will always do better long term because of the search engine optimization, the SEO, the fact that people are still searching for Bruce Lee on a continual basis because of the pedestal that he has been placed on. That's not why we're doing this episode. We're doing this episode because we want everyone to consider this very simple premise that growth cannot happen without change. Mm -hmm. And that if we do not change how we do this, if we do not change the fact that Bruce Lee is where he is, then we cannot grow beyond it. How many martial artists out there have learned from what Bruce Lee set forward, have improved upon it, and, dare I say, are better? Uh, I, what the argument can be made, tons. I would suggest that there are quite a few. Yeah, absolutely. We do not need to say that Bruce Lee is the best of all time and cannot be bettered in order to say Bruce Lee accomplished absolutely incredible, amazing things absolutely. and deserves recognition for them. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what you look at. If you look at anything but martial arts, if you look at the people who came before, music, mm -hmm. most people love music of some genre or other. Think about a genre of music that you know best. Think of someone who was considered the best at some period of time and tell me that there haven't been others who learned from them and have gone on to become even better. You know, if you think of something like, like Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal guitarist. And absolutely. from what I have kind of seen, read in documentaries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm at the time was considered by most the best guitarist Absolutely. living and possibly ever living. Mm -hmm. But there are plenty of guitarists now who are better than Jimi Hendrix was then. And and a lot of those guitarists idolized yes. Jimi Hendrix. Yes. Joe Satriani, for example, like phenomenal guitar player. And a lot of his influences came from listening to that stuff. And uh, arguably... I mean, music is subjective, but mm -hmm. I think it's just as good, if not better, than Jimi Hendrix. Now, when, when people say Jimi Hendrix is the greatest of all time, I may have to shut the door. Would you do me a favor and yeah, shut yeah. the slider? Because yeah. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a bird out there who's being uh, very loud. I don't know what it's yelling at. Probably me. 
Uh, I have a long standing feud with birds. Maybe they feel that uh, Bruce Lee shouldn't be taken off the price. But perhaps, perhaps that is the personification of the folks out there who are unhappy Could be. with our premise. If if you say that Jimi Hendrix is the greatest of all time, you're likely saying that Jimi Hendrix at his peak in that period of time, mm. because who he was versus who everyone else was, was significantly better, right? If you claim someone today is less than, you're probably suggesting, suggesting that the gap between them and everyone else mm -hmm. is much smaller. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't mean that the people you're comparing to aren't better than Jimi Hendrix, right? There are people who have a better understanding of the physiology of martial arts mm -hmm. and how the body works than Bruce Lee did then because we've had 50 years of, yeah. of increased understanding. Yeah, and you might say he may have been ahead of his time. Absolutely was. And and I would I would agree, but was he 50 years ahead of his time? I mean, uh, uh, he was ahead of his time, but so much time is Are gone. we not allowed to catch up? Correct, exactly. That, that's my point. And, you know, if no one... And I, we're not saying – no one is saying you're going to take his contributions away. He he has been a huge influence on martial arts. We're not taking those things away. But if we are not allowing other people to be recognized for their contributions, it diminishes the re the whole community. This, this circles back to the argument that we've made on the show a number of times with, you know, some sort of math logic – to show that if you do not, if your goal as an instructor is not to help your students become better, mm. then martial arts is de doomed to, to degrade yeah, over yeah. time. And this is very similar to that. If Bruce, if if what we do as martial artists can only ever be as good as Bruce Lee, we cannot improve. Correct. Yeah. We will always be less than. Martial arts will not improve. And you know, we could fast forward ten thousand years, and well, you know. Nobody's as good as Bruce Lee, which to me is a ridiculous way to look at things. I am far from an expert on Bruce Lee's writings. Same, same with me. But my basic understanding of the things that he stood for suggests that he would never have wanted people to take what he put forward and... Leave it unchanged. And preserve it in amber. It seems, in yeah. fact, the antithesis mm. of what he set forward with Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. It was meant to evolve. It was meant to be personal. Yeah. And, you know, there are folks out there, we, we've talked about them, we've had some of them on the show, who have encapsulated what Bruce Lee taught in the 60s as Jeet Kune Do mm -hmm. and treat that as a style. I'm not going to say that that's wrong. I find that actually incredibly interesting from a historical perspective, mm -hmm. from a martial arts perspective, from the idea of how do you get into the head of somebody who yeah. has been gone for 50 years? Well, what was it they were teaching towards the end of their life? Great. But I'm never going to say this is all I want to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing to think about is one of the things that he is lauded for is – his combining of styles, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, a, a perfect example is in Enter the Dragon, that fight scene in the beginning when he does an armbar. Mm -hmm. Like that, as I understand it, I was not around then training, but as I understand it, like he was a striker and then all of a sudden he got on the ground and did some, what we know today as BJJ. That was a big deal. Yeah. But how many martial artists today train in multiple different styles? Yeah. Whether they realize it or not. Correct. Most and, martial artists have at least a, a, a little bit of understanding of, you know, wrist lock, self-defense sure, sort sure. of stuff. And and so, you know, I'm not taking away that he was prolific in terms of combining those styles and training and other things. But it's not like we, no one else does that now. Everyone does that. Right. So I think we've done a pretty good job of it, of explaining our position on, yeah. on what has happened and, and why this needs to change. How do we change it? That's a darn good question that I don't know that I have an answer for. 
first we have to agree to change it. Mm. First, we have to agree to say, you know what? It is okay to recognize Bruce Lee for what he is and was. Mm -hmm. We do not have to be divided into these camps of Bruce Lee is the god of martial arts and everything he touched turned to gold. You know, Mm -hmm. he was not King Midas. Or a camp that does exist that seems a bit smaller. Bruce Lee is an overrated hack and didn't really do that much and wouldn't have won in a fight and, and, and. Uh, those are two very strong extremes that very I don't think serve, opposite. Yeah. That I don't think serve anyone. And I don't think we should think of things in that way. Mm-hmm. I think if we recognize that like anyone who has come before, we can look at Bruce Lee's achievements, learn from them, grow from them, and improve upon them in the same way that we might look at General Choi of mm-hmm. Taekwondo or Funakoshi mm-hmm. of karate or, oh, I don't know. Or, or, or. Or, or yeah, whoever. Osensei Yoshiba. Yoshiba from uh, of Aikido. Yoshiba, yeah. Yep. Right? Like, there's just... We've done a pretty good job in a lot of other styles, right? I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't see very many people holding up the Okinawan Karate Masters in this way and saying we can't ever change the things that they put forward. Some people do, mm-hmm. but I see a lot more variability there. Yeah, and we've had a number of people on the show who have gone in and around Aikido in a lot of really interesting ways. In fact, I don't think it's aired, but we just had somebody on the show. Uh, who, actually, yeah. In there. Yeah. You're talking about Ruckus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Not just taking what's there, but digging and trying to understand and improve on, if possible. And still doing so. And still doing so. And I think that if if we were to apply the same attitude to what Bruce Lee has put forward, if we read his writings, if we trained his curriculum... And if we watched his movies, because from what I understand of people who really know Jeet Kune Do, there's a decent amount of Jeet Kune Do in his movies because he, he had a lot of say on his choreography. I may be wrong on that, yeah. but that's my understanding. If we looked at that not as this is gospel, but this is foundation, where could we go? Mm. We could go pretty darn yeah. far because it is a very stable foundation. There's yeah. a lot yeah. of information there. And I think that, you know, there, there's... It reminds me of religion because for a lot of people, Bruce Lee is, I don't want to say capital G God, but yeah, yeah. you know, the word God, that he is a God that he, he put forward so much wonderful stuff that uh, it, it's, it's sacrilege to, yeah. and, to and try I, to improve upon it. And, and a lot of, and I'm putting this in air quotes for those that are just listening, listening, a lot of his disciples can be very fanatical yeah. about him and what he's done. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it does, for some I have seen, they definitely view that kind of as a religious figure. Yeah. I would suggest, and, and I think we'll probably start to wind mm-hmm. here because I think we've, we've beat this horse a bit. Yeah, yeah. I would suggest that if Bruce Lee was alive today, and he'd be he'd be in his eighties, right? I believe so. Yeah. I don't want to pretend to know what he would have done over the last fifty years. I don't want to pretend what place he occupied. He would occupy what further contributions he would make. But I would guarantee that what he was doing would have changed. Absolutely. It would have evolved. For sure. So if that's true, then why are we doing that? Why are we locking it in in so many ways? That's a really good point. The goal for any of us should be to become better versions of ourselves. This is what martial arts teaches us. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today in some way. Bruce Lee would have wanted that as well. So, I'm distracted because there's heavy equipment rolling up my road. That's right. I think if Bruce Lee was alive today, 
Whistlekick would probably be his favorite podcast. I, I'm quite certain of that. We can say it right now. We, we are Bruce Lee's favorite podcast. I don't know if I can bring myself to say that because I don't want somebody to cut that sound bite out. <laughs> Maybe we would have had him on the show. You know what? I bet we would. Yeah. I, I, if you look at who else we've had on the show, I bet he would have come on the show. So, hope, let's see. Is that picking up? It's probably some background noise. That's right. This is what happens when you live on a dirt road. They maintain it, and it takes a lot of noise. All we're asking of you is to consider this. In the same way that we've asked you to not put your instructors on pedestals, in the same way that we've encouraged you to constantly make progress, not just in your own training, but what your goals are. As you get closer to your goals, as you become better and more refined, I want you, we want you, you should want you to set bigger, loftier, higher goals that require you to grow even more. If you've reached that goal, if you've got nothing more to do, well, now you die. Yep. Not necessarily literally, but at least figuratively. You've got and to that is, moving forward. And that's sad. Yeah. And I would suggest that we owe that to the memory of Bruce Lee. In fact, I would say the more you hold him in high regard, the more you owe it to his legacy to take what he has provided and advance it, to grow it, to make it more than it was. Because I cannot imagine he wouldn't want that. Agreed. If you have feedback for this, find us on Facebook. We have a relatively new group. We grew out of the behind the scenes group. We are now the martial arts radio page on Facebook, but you can also reach out to us individually with emails, uh, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We'll change that soon. That's mm -hmm. it's on the list too. Uh, you can leave comments. You can go to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can leave a comment there. But if nothing else, I hope that you really do consider what we're saying. And if there are people in your, li in your life that idolize Bruce Lee, maybe you can have a conversation with them. Maybe you can, can understand why. See where that takes you. If you want to support us, remember, we've got that Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We do events. We do all kinds of cool things. Check us out at whistlekick.com. See all the things that we've got happening. Hopefully we can see you somewhere at some time. And if you want to follow us on social media, we're at Whistlekick. I think that takes us think so. down through to the end. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.